With a show as successful as The Simpsons, it was inevitable that people would make a bunch of video games using the license. Oftentimes developers made clones of other genres and set them in The Simpsons universe. They tried a 2D beat-em-up, a crappy skateboard game, and a game so similar to Crazy Taxi that Sega sued over it. But in 2003, Radical Entertainment made a GTA clone for The Simpsons and called it The Simpsons Hit and Run. The story is about a big mystery surrounding black vans, wasp cameras, and a new soda. It's a story that gets more and more outlandish as you progress, but it's very entertaining. It's actually written by the same writers from the show. The story is also aware of the medium in which it's being presented in, as sometimes the characters break the fourth wall from time to time. And I actually found that funnier than The Simpsons games, since the fourth wall breaking is more subtle here. Kind of like Banjo-Kazooie in that sense. The visual quality is actually pretty decent for a licensed game of this time. Now granted, a lot of the characters look strange with this animation style, and there are plenty of muddy textures in Springfield, but the way everything comes together as a faithful representation is nice. The lighting is good, the environments are good, but there are also some issues with limp syncing in the in-game cutscenes. Flanders, look! I found your missing stuff! Now, about the reward... <laughs> Characters sort of just flap their lips and repeat gestures, and it's not great. But the dialogue is funny enough that you can forgive something like this, especially remembering what year this came out. The sound design is very faithful to the show. The music in the levels and the different missions sounds like music you'd hear in an actual episode. Also, the voice acting is fantastic, as the original cast provide the voices to their respective characters. But I do feel like the icing on the sound design cake is the sound effects used when you hit something. Oh, that was so cool. Yeah, that's another thing. Whatever character you're playing as will utter a line as they're driving to react to some crazy thing that they just did. It adds great charm to the game, even though you could get tired of hearing some of the lines multiple times. Or you'll just get so into it that you find this funny all the time and say the lines with the characters. The best part about that is when your character is a passenger of another character driving, so you get two sets of dialogue. Always true to each character, too. Your guy was probably going to be dead before it's out of warranty. So how exactly is this a GTA clone? Well, basically you play in an open world Springfield that's been divided into levels, mainly Evergreen Terrace, Downtown Springfield, and Squidport. In the seven levels, you do come back to these places just with a different character at a different time of night, and sometimes more or less parts of the area are accessible. And throughout the whole game, you'll play as Homer, Bart, Lisa, Marge, and Apu each one having missions and character interactions true to themselves, which does help to make the experience less repetitive. But it does feel like Bart and Homer got a little bonus as you play as them in two levels, while everyone else is one each. I must sting. Springfield being divided up like this isn't quite the same as a full open world we're used to now, but for the sixth generation it was pretty good. You can go into some buildings like the Quickie Mart and Moe's Tavern, but mainly you're in the streets taking on missions. But whether you're on a mission or achieving a side goal, you do feel immersed in this world featuring not only the main cast, but plenty of supporting characters too, many of which will send you on the story missions. The missions are mostly driving. Race someone, get somewhere before time runs out, destroy a car, tail somebody, escape from someone who is chasing you, things like that. While there are multiple types of driving missions, it can feel like missions are being recycled after a while. Maybe that's why the later missions get so difficult. I mean, you're having to accomplish some on-road objective while trying not to let the regular traffic get in your way. It does get frustrating sometimes, but it does feel like appropriate challenge too. Though it would have been all better had the driving controls been a little less wonky. But the controls aren't giving you any problems, driving is pretty fun. Especially if you just hop into a car after turning on certain cheat codes and just destroying everything. Oh, dog, I am Evil Joseph. I am Evil Joseph. Oh shit, Popo on my ass! Yeah, that's one thing to watch out for. If you build up your gauge too much from smashing things, running over pedestrians, or <laughs> kicking the shit out of somebody, 
The cops will chase you until you stop long enough for them to take 50 coins from you. And let me tell you, these cops will stop at nothing to ram you down, even if they have to crash through other people and run you over. This is all a lie. I was framed. I'm completely innocent. I should also mention that there are a lot of cars to unlock in this game, each with different stats to make some better for certain missions than others. You get them by playing missions, buying them from characters, and winning the bonus races. The bonus races are pretty intense and will test your mettle, but with no items, it can get difficult to catch up if you've fallen way behind from crashing. As a result, restarting a race multiple times to get every shortcut and not crash can get on your nerves. Hey, you were supposed to eat my dust! But the game isn't all about cars, as there is a good amount of things to do on foot. Throughout Springfield, there are great opportunities to platform, on rare occasions to collect all the items in the area, but mostly for bonus collectibles. The main bonus collectibles being these shiny cards containing items from noteworthy episodes. But you can also explore Springfield to find things to do in exchange for coins. This means triggering gags, destroying Buzz Cola containers, and destroying these creepy wasp cameras hidden throughout each level. It's about as close to combat as this game gets. The platforming is actually well designed and sometimes downright challenging, so the game not only embraces GTA, but also 90s 3D platformers thus providing an enjoyable mix to the package. You'll want to explore the world seeking out more Simpsons fan service and nabbing every collectible. Aside from using coins to buy cars, you also use them to buy costumes for each character. The cool thing about this is that the costumes are not only all taken straight from actual episodes, but some of them are actually needed to complete certain missions. So it's a bonus feature that's more integrated into the game. But a problem with coins is that things become more expensive as you play, and coins become harder and harder to come by, which does become annoying. Unless you turn on the cheats again and get coins the easy yet ridiculously amusing way. I never thought I would enjoy a licensed game this much. There are some things I wish this game included though. One I would have liked would be an accessible overview map of the whole level with the ability to set waypoints. The radar in the corner got confusing sometimes. Also with how great the Treehouse of Horror specials are, it would have been nice if... Wait... Is that... Witches? Ghosts? Jack-o'-lanterns? Zombies everywhere? Oh my god, they actually included a Halloween level in this game! A level devoted to my favorite holiday! Hell yeah! Spooky, scary skeletons! This is awesome! The missions here are super difficult, but everything else about this level is amazing. The references to Treehouse of Horror stories from the 90s, platforming on buildings changed for Halloween, running over zombies. It's just so beautiful. This game also has a bonus multiplayer game. Apparently when you collect all seven cards in each level, you unlock a track for you and some friends to race on. You can play with AI bots, choose from the five main characters, and choose a vehicle you've unlocked, which is all good, so this should be pretty interesting. Well, shit. I mean, the tracks look nice and are clear representations of the different levels, but my god, is this a clusterfuck to control? I usually don't like racing games with a top-down perspective, and now I'm reminded as to why. The driving controls are even worse in this game, and the point of view just makes it worse. I'm not doing this on purpose, okay? I really had a hard time playing this. And by the way, I'm playing against bots right now. Just look at them smash into walls, even they're confused. This could have been a fantastic distraction from the main game if they had only improved the controls and made it a behind-the-car split-screen view like in Mario Kart instead. Nothing works if it isn't thought out. Well, maybe I can get good at this if I keep playing. No, I... Turn... You... This sucks. So the multiplayer isn't great, but the main game is. This is an easy game to recommend for any Simpsons fan to buy. It's a way to be immersed in the Simpsons universe while also experiencing fun and challenging gameplay. Best Simpsons game ever. Well, that's my review of the Simpsons Hit and Run for the GameCube. If you like this review, check out my previous reviews of the Godfather Black Hand Edition for the Wii and Batman Arkham City Armored Edition for the Wii U. See you all next time. Oh, that was too easy.